welcome to another episode of The Zog. This week what I want to start with is a look at some uh, retro games that I managed to pick up this week and then uh, we'll move on from there. Okay, hello and welcome back to another retro game haul. This is going to be a short one because at the moment I'm focused on the local elections in May so I'm doing a lot of campaigning for people and that's taking all my time. So I think that's more important than hunting around seeing what I can get from retro game halls here, there and everywhere. But I do have a couple of things. Now, one of the people who saw my last but one uh, episodes of the Zog where I talked about retro game halls cited that uh, Guitar Hero Aerosmith was available on uh, eBay. And this was a brand new sealed copy of the game, so it's in perfect condition. I've only opened it uh, once and uh, tried it a couple of times because it is the uh, Scandinavian version, but yeah, it's not in Litnosk, so it's. I can actually read what this is saying. However, the game doesn't seem to want to load in my PlayStation now. When I'm looking at the disc, it seems fine. I don't see any issues that would stop it from loading. So I asked online what the what the problem could be and whether uh, Norwegian uh, games won't load, especially uh, Norwegian music games like this, because there may be uh, copyright issues with the music that uh, cause it to be region locked. And um, the view is that it should work, but it's not. So it may be the fact that I've got a, a V4 PlayStation 2. It's one of fairly early ones. I got it with uh, bundled with uh, Gran Turismo 3 A-Spec or whatever it was called. So it is quite old now, it's getting on. And it may be that it just doesn't uh, like reading certain games, which would explain why the Path of Neo from my last uh, retro haul, the one that's going up at the moment, doesn't work. It won't load. It just The first uh, copy I got went to the menu screen and then stopped. And now it doesn't load at all, which apparently is common with that game. Sometimes it just doesn't work with certain PlayStation. So what I'm going to do is, uh, when I get paid, I'm going to splurge a little bit and get myself a slimline PS2. My other half, because she thinks it's funny, says I should get a pink one. And to be honest with you, given that most of the consoles I have in here are black or grey and a bit dull, I think I may actually get the pink one just for a bit of variety. But I'll see what I can actually pick up. So, and uh, when I get that, I'll try out Path of Neo and I'll try out the Guitar Hero Aerosmith again because at least I've got it in my collection now. The only one that I'm missing, I thought I had a complete set apart from this one and then I realised that Guitar Hero Van Halen did come out on PlayStation 2. Now, I thought it didn't. I thought it was a PlayStation 3 and uh, Xbox uh, exclusive, well, exclusive, but that they cut off at that point, but they hadn't. Apparently Van Halen is the last one and I'm looking out for that one now. So I've got some uh, eBay alerts for that and uh, looking out in uh, various fairs and things like that. But we'll see what happens. Like I say, it's not really important to me right now because I'm focusing on the election. But if it's around, I'll have it because I like that collection. Now, speaking of collections, I am trying to get a complete set of Game Gear games. And to that extent, I found Axe Battler. Now, this one is an interesting fun one. Can you see it? Yeah. Kind of. This one is a fun one. I'm doing a Game Hammer review of it, and uh, Game Hammer, the Game Hammer review is one of the first new style ones where I'm not just doing a let's play with a couple of opinions. I'm actually making a show that's worth watching. <laughs> I keep looking down because I'm trying to clean off a couple of uh, what appears to be glue marks from this game. Let's give it a rub. Yeah, it's just bits of glue from a sticker that's been on it at some point. There you are. It's fine now. So. Uh, like I said, Game Hammer now will be a show that's really worth watching because I'm going to be doing a bit more piece to camera and a uh, bit of uh, comedy in there. And basically I'm going to make it fun to watch instead of just a let's play. And the first one I'm doing is on Axe Battler. Now, I actually like this game. It's kind of fun. There's a lot of problems with it, yeah, and it is a bit like Link. But uh, I actually like it. It's a fun game. I've been trying quite hard to get through this uh, one half an hour here and there, just giving it a play. And it's an enjoyable game. So I'm really happy that I got this for £1.04. Four yep. It's. I, I was really hoping I could get into my £1 challenge, where seeing what retro games you can get without too much expense. Because I think retro gaming as a hobby for collecting shouldn't be a massive outlay in terms of price for regular games. Stuff that is rare, sure, you're going to have to pay a premium for it because it's rare. But other games, I don't think we should be gouged on them. So I've been doing a, a £1 and under challenge, seeing what I can get. £1, four pence, not bad. However, the cream of the crop for this week, and this is one that I'm so happy I got, is this. An Amstrad MP1 modulator. Now this thing 
allows you to plug an Amstrad CPC, like the one I've got here. This is a CPC 464, where it's got a ROM swap, and uh, it thinks it's a 6128, which makes it quite useful at times. Now, this here will allow this computer to plug into this computer. My problem so far that I've had is that the ITV I have here, ITV Hybrid, it's uh, not the one that's designed for SCART connections and uh, computer gaming with consoles and things like that. It's the one that's designed to basically pick up TV signals. Uh, it came with an analog uh, area and things like that. And uh, as a result, it has a bit of an issue with certain uh, computers. Like the CPC here doesn't have a powered uh, output, so the SCART signal is quite weak when you get it. And it works on a fair few LCD TVs, but it doesn't work on my big CRT TV, and it doesn't work on the Mac through the ITV. So what I've got here is an MP1 modulator. Now this takes the signal from the CPC and outputs it via this long wire here to a coaxial aerial cable, which means I can plug it into TVs and I can plug it into the Mac via the ITV. Now, at the moment, I've got a pretty strong signal. You can, you've got colours. Before, with the ITV with connecting through the SCART, what I got was a black and white screen with a lot of vertical lines and a lot of interference because the signal wasn't very strong and it was having to try and boost it and not doing it very well. This gives a proper colour signal. However, it's a little bit distorted, and I think that's due to the fact that it's an old piece of equipment and needs a bit of a clean. So what I'm going to do is when I get a bit, a bit of time in a minute, I'm going to open it up and give it a clean. Now, that shouldn't pause an issue because I've done that in the past with the CPC 464 6128 hybrid. And uh, what happened there was when I actually had a monitor that worked, the monitor I have now sadly died. It is 30 odd year old. And if there's something with the uh, power switch that's just gone. And I don't want to open it up because I know that uh, these things carry a charge for a long time. They're quite dangerous in that respect. But what I got when I plugged the CPC into the monitor before the monitor broke was a distorted signal due to uh, just basically shorts in the uh, circuitry due to dust. And when I cleaned up the CPC and put it all back together, that all disappeared. And I'm seeing the same thing through this onto the ITV. So I'm hoping that's just a bit of uh, a cleanup that's required. So I'm going to do that when I get a minute and see what happens. Hopefully we'll get a good signal. Okay, what actually happened after that was I went and uh, took apart the uh, Amsterdam P1 module. Because uh, I was thinking that because I had the same uh, video problem when I took the Amstrad CPC out of storage, it might be the same issues. Basically, it's just dirty inside. And if we cleaned it up, then any shorts that were going on that were causing interference might go away. So what I did was I roped in Jennifer, my wife, and uh, we together we took it apart and had a look at what was going on. Let's have a look at how that went. All right, well, what we're going to do here is open up this Amstrad MP1 modulator. So it's going to require a fair few unscrewings. But let's have a look at it. Because what we want to do is try and deal with the fact that we have a bit of a signal issue on it. So we're going to start by opening this up. Phillips style screwdriver. Just try and get in there and see if we can do it. Doesn't seem to want to come off. That might be a problem. Because I don't want to damage the uh, screw heads of course. Okay, what we've had to do, because we couldn't uh, get these off on our own, is grab a little wrench. We're going to clip it onto this near the end of this screwdriver. Like that. Got it as tight as we can, and that gives us a massive leverage. So, we should be able to now unscrew this by putting a little pressure down and turning. And there we go. Right, we've got the five outer ones out. All we have is these two big ones here, which I haven't removed because they're stuck in tight. We're going to see whether this means the top come, and it does come off, which means that they are holding something else on. Now, the idea is that this is somehow going to help because let's just zoom in a bit now. Because what we have here is quite old technology. Now, what happened on the CPC 464 was I got signal problems due to dust and dirt causing shortened connections. So, what I've got here is some electrical contact cleaner. 
and we're just going to spray it in and uh, let it do its job. Now, already I can see that this has cleaned it up. The contact spray has definitely cleaned up. I'm going to let the little bit of uh, moisture that's on it uh, quickly evaporate. And it's already looking a lot cleaner. Now, what I've also got is some multi-surface clean and dust anti-static wipes. And I'm going to use this anti-static wipe to clean off a lot of the excess dirt. And the idea of this is basically just to make sure that the connections that we've been spraying don't short with one another. And hopefully that will mean we get better signal out of this thing. Hopefully that'll do it. Looks pretty. Looks an awful lot cleaner now. And there we are, it's all back together. And yes, it does say do not remove any screws, but you know what? I'm a rebel. Besides, it's out of warranty anyway. So what we can see from this is that it isn't actually a dirty connection issue. What it actually appears to be is a dry solder joint or something like that. And that's a bigger job than we've had time for at the moment. So that's actually going to have to be the focus of another episode when we can take it apart and deal with any dry solder joints that we find. And once that's happened, then perhaps I might be able to get a good signal out of this thing. One can but hope. Anyway, I want to end today by having a look at another set of games. This time I didn't pick these up. This was uh, Jen, my wife. She came back from work with a selection of games. So let's have a look at them now. This one, the first one we've got, uh, wasn't actually uh, one that she got. I went into a branch of game in Bolton because I thought, why not? Go and see what's there. And uh, we've got a pre-owned uh, 99p copy of uh, We Rock Drum King on the Wii. And uh, I picked this up because I like uh, music games, uh, as you might have noticed from the Guitar Hero stuff. Um, it's got a security seal on it, and uh, he didn't have to look for the disc because it was already in. I can hear it. It's probably a bit loose. So I, it might be pre-owned. It might not. I don't know. But uh, it looks pretty good quality. I mean, the, the case is in very good condition and uh, I'm quite happy with this so I'm going to open up and just see what it actually is you know right the manual is in upside down uh, a fingerprint there but other than that that is in perfect condition and let's have a look at the disc Fingerprints, so it has been opened at some point, but there are no marks on this apart from fingerprints. There you are. Brilliant. So, I think all in all, that is very good. What have we got here? Now, this one, my other half actually phoned me up about. It has a mark here. Well, mark. It, the cover has been gouged at some point. And it's not in the best condition ever, but Outrun 2006, coast to coast. My goodness. I love Outrun games. It's just one of those things. I absolutely adore them. So the cover is not in great condition. The manual has, basically, I think an animal's got at it. It's got teeth marks. Can you see that? No, not really. Good, but it marks. It looks like teeth marks. Oh, yeah, it's focused out. Looks like teeth marks to me, and uh, it's been well used. There's holes on the back, like someone's hit it with a compass. So whoever's had this is a bit of a prick, basically. But the game plays perfectly. This is the one that I tried earlier on when I came back from campaigning. Scratched a bit, but other than that, perfectly good. Plays just fine. I'm going to... Give it a bit of a clean up and uh, most likely I'm going to change the, although given that the state of the, I was going to say I was going to change the cover, although given the state of it and the fact that it's got an actual uh, dent through the paper, I think I probably won't. Okay, let's get on with this. Uh, next one up, we've got Pacific Warriors 2 Dogfight on the PS2. Now, they're all, these are all PS2 games that we've got here, so... Pacific Warriors 2 Dogfight. This one was 75 pence. 
and uh, it appears to be some kind of combat flight simulator. The case is mm, not in great condition. It's got paint on it, uh, and that might be a rub off, but a couple of uh, dents here and there. But other than that, perfectly fine. The manual itself, it's got a couple of creases in it, but I think it's uh, hardly ever been looked at. And let's have a look at the game itself. It's got fingerprints with a couple of scratches, but other than that, it's perfectly all right. So, I think that's going to be pretty good. And, hmm, I don't know the game, but it looks interesting. So I'm going to have a try that and see how it goes, because it might be fun to play. Next up, we have World War II Battle Over the Pacific. Now, this looks in pretty good condition. There's a couple of, uh, basically wear and tear just uh, light scratches on the cover so I think this has been kept in reasonably good condition again the manual it's been slightly creased but it doesn't look like it's been read oh no it's definitely been read it's a crease on the back but uh, it looks pretty good condition to me and let's have a look at the disc itself fingerprints and a couple of light scratches nothing that is going to cause a problem there so overall for 75 pence I think that was pretty good. Hunter the Reckoning Wayward. Now I've heard something about the Hunter the Reckoning games and uh, people say they're not fantastic. However, I've never played one myself. This uh, case is slightly uh, scratched so it's uh, the usual wear and tear on these things. 75 pence so you can't really complain. It looks pretty good condition all of things considered. The manual itself I don't think it's been out of the kiss. My goodness. Yeah, I don't think that's been read. The only marks on it, not marks, the only creases on it are where it uh, sits with the, uh, there, you can see it in the camera, are where it sits uh, held in place. And, oh, but it don't, a couple of light scratches and some fingerprints, there's nothing on there. I don't think this has been played that much. So, all in all, 75p, I can't really say anything about it. I think it might be worth having a look at. Right, here we have F1 Championship Season 2000. And uh, look at the condition. This seems perfectly good condition. I don't see many marks on it at all. I mean, it's got uh, rubs on it. It looks like it's been on and off a shelf. But the manual, it's been slightly red. There's a couple of slight upturns on the corners. The game itself, covered in fingerprints, so it has been used. One or two light scratches covered in fingerprints, but aside from that, my goodness. I'll give that a rub down and it should be okay. Um, It's got EB written on the thing. Someone's written EB on there in marker. I hate when companies do that. Why write on things? I mean, I know, because it, it, you can tell that it's been pre-owned beforehand, but second-hand, second-hand, you know? Now, that was 50p. Going back to 75p for Prince of Persia, The Warrior Within. Now, when I was at university the first time round, uh, I had a friend who loved the Prince of Persia games, and I never played them myself, but he adored them, so I thought, well, we'll give this a try and see how it goes. I've never actually played them. I think I haven't even played the original. It was on the Amstrad. I remember there was a copy on the Amstrad and I never played it. Um, This has a couple of slight scratches. It's basically wear and tear from being put on and off a shelf. There is no manual. The manual is missing. Um, Property of Home Entertainment Corporation PLC on the disc itself. I have no idea what that means. I'm assuming that, what is it, a rental company or something like that? And it's been scratched, but not by much. I think this is still going to be playable. We'll give it a rub down and see what happens. But uh, no mind yourself to find out at some point, but pretty good condition, all things considered. Now, again, for a pound, Prince of Persia, uh, the Sands of Time this time, the one that you can rewind a bit like Blink's the Time Sweeper. I remember, at the time, I remember this, and people making a big thing, saying, oh, it's got a unique mechanic, you can rewind time. I was thinking... Well, when I was seeing this played by my uh, housemate, earlier in that day, I'd been playing Blink the Time Sweeper. I said, right, so the mechanic that is apparently unique is not unique. So I never really got into it because of that. I just thought, you're hyping things for things that 
I've already been done. Come on, guys. But the cover itself, a uh, couple of scuffs and dints, but nothing too major. Uh, it's got a manual this time, and it has been read. It's got it's actually quite damaged at the top, but uh, not unreadable. It's perfectly acceptable for my needs. Uh, the disc itself, yeah, a couple of slight scratches, but nothing much. So the disc has been uh, cared for, which is always a good thing. So I am happy with that. Now, what else we got here? Paris Dakar Rally. I remember the cover of this and I don't know where I remember it from. It's not one I'm uh, familiar with myself. I haven't played it, but it looks uh, interesting. And for 75p, I am not going to complain. The cover is in very good condition. I am actually quite impressed with that. And uh, let's have a look at the manual. Oh, it's got all the bump as well. Bits and pieces of bump. And the manual... Yeah, it's slight like scuffing around the edges and a little bit bent, but I think it's probably not been read that much. And, my goodness, Extreme G Racing advert on the back, which kind of dates this. I remember, wasn't Extreme G Racing one of the launch titles, or one of the very early ones anyway? So, yeah, that uh, dates this one. Paris Dakar Rally... The CD looks pretty good. Yeah, a couple of uh, fingerprints, but aside from that, nothing much. So, yeah. I'll give that a try later on. Might be good fun to play. I like a bit of a rally game. What else we got? PDC World Championship Darts for 50 pence. Don't know this one at all. Don't see many darts games around these days. I remember 180 and things like that on uh, the old 8-bits, uh, but no, nothing lately. This uh, game looks in very good condition. Quite possibly hasn't been played much at all by the look of things. So let's have a look inside. And we have a manual that has been taken out once because it's got a uh, crease in the top. But is in perfectly good condition other than that. So I'm very impressed. And let's have a look at the disc. My goodness. There is one fingerprint and a slight scratch. But other than that, perfectly fine. My goodness. Chances are pretty good in that case that this may have only been played once or twice. Wow. Oh, we'll have a look at that later on. For 50p, I'm certainly not going to complain. These are games that I remember people talking about quite a lot at the time. But again, never played it myself. Time Crisis 2. 75 pence. Uh, cover looks like it's... Uh, I've got a dent here and there. Yeah, a couple of dents on the back, so it's not in the best condition ever. I'm going to have to do something to clean this up because that's had one of those, uh, what is it, three for two deals or something from game on it uh, at some point. Other than that, let's have a look at this. Well, it's got the extra bump that comes with it. The manual has been read. It's got a crease in it, bent a little bit. Nothing that's going to cause any problems. Looking pretty good so far. Put that back in there and check the disc. Perfectly good condition. Hardly anything on it. Bit of dust. Let's see what we can do. I bet somewhere, someone out there is going to complain about what I've just done there. To wipe all of this off. Yeah. I can see three very tiny scratches, but aside from that, perfectly good disc. So I am very, very happy for that. My goodness. Yeah. Looks pretty good. For 75 pence, I'm certainly not going to complain. Right, this one, Time Crisis 3. Now, this one was not in the £1 challenge because it was £1.50. Same as uh, Outrun. So, let's have a look at this. The case, it's, my goodness, the case has got bubbling and uh, things down the side. That's That's a glue thing, isn't it? Yeah, there's glue damage on it. Weird. And it's dinted on the back. So it's actually in worse condition than the 75 pence one. But never mind, you can't complain when you're getting them fairly cheap, all things considered. The manual has definitely been read. It's got uh, creases down the side. And it's still got the bump, though. So I'm happy with that. Still perfectly readable, even though it's got slight crease. So let's... Uh, oops. Don't want to put it more creases into it, do we? Let's have a look at the disc itself. 
yep, that's been worn and played a fair amount. It's got a few scratches on it and a lot of fingerprints. Basically, I'm going to have to give that a rub before we try it. And again, the case has that uh, 3 for 2 sticker on that just hasn't come off. Now, let's have a look at the next one. This one's covered in... My God. <laughs> it's covered in a layer of dust. It's been sat on a shelf for a long time, it seems. Uh, Pro Evolution Soccer 6. The cover, yeah, it's covered in dust. But aside from that, it looks in very good condition. So let's have a look at the inside. My goodness. Got the bump that came with it, so that's nice. And the manual has never been read. This is an unread manual, it's obvious. Wow. My goodness. So, for 25 pence, I am not going to complain. <laughs> wow. I don't even like football games, you know. But a collection is a collection. The game has been played a lot. It's got scratches and fingerprints. We'll have to see what goes on with that, whether it needs a clean up or not. But I'll give it a rub down before we try it. But for 25p, I'm not going to complain. Speaking of 25 pences, we have here 2006 FIFA World Cup. 25 pence again. And uh, yeah, look at this. Hardly anything on the cover. A couple of light scratches. Looks like someone has. Uh, Rested on it and signed their name at one point. There's a couple of uh, letters there. The top of the thing has uh, been damaged slightly, but I'm not going to complain too much. Aside from that, it looks perfectly fine. There's a manual here that, again, nope, this one has been red. It's got a couple of creases and finger markings on it, so not all in all, not too bad. And, yeah, the disc is scratched, but I don't think it's going to be unplayable. My cat's come in, if anyone was wondering why the door opened. Hello, little cats. What's up, Freddy Kins? You alright? Right, next, what have we got? Uh, continue with the football theme. FIFA 2007 for 25 pence. Which uh, continues uh, my football game collection, even though I don't like football. Dints on the back. Scratches on the front, so it's been... Well loved at some point. My goodness, the case has practically fallen open. Get out of the bag there, Fredkins. Still got the bump. The manual has been read, but not by much, so that's in pretty good condition, all things considered. Stick those back in there. Let's check out the disc, because that's all important. Covered in fingerprints. You'd think people might give these a rub before they take them back, wouldn't you? And a few scratches, but nothing major. Oof, on the home stretch now. Now, I have three copies of <laughs> FIFA 06 now. Um, this one looks in pretty good condition. There's a couple of dents on the yeah, a couple of dents on the case. Some major damage over the barcode there. Someone's tried to scratch something off at some point. Um, all of the bump seems to be here. And the manual has been uh, read a few times, actually, so someone's needed to know the instructions. And my goodness, the back of one of the bits of bump is damaged. So this won't be uh, a one that we end up keeping all the stuff from, but never mind. I might be able to use the bump to build up a full collection into one of the other versions. The disc is very cloudy. That's not a good sign. Um, that's that's actually a concern. Yeah, the disc is very cloudy. That's a, a, a concern. That might not be playable at all. I've seen one other game that looks like that. And it was my copy of Outrun 2 on the Xbox. And it was totally unplayable because of it. I think that's delaminated. This may end up having to go back. So we'll put that one to one side, because we'll have to have a look at it later on. Right, what we've got here is what my other half calls boxes to use to repair other games, basically. Four copies of uh, FIFA Football 2005, each of them 
for five pence. I kid you not, five pence per game. Now, I don't have a copy of this in my collection just yet, and each of these looks in pretty good condition. So, I'm going to end up keeping the best condition one, and if needs be, I'll swap manuals and stuff around to make a full copy of it myself, and then that will go into my collection. But uh, the other ones, well, I've got a copy of Hello Kitty Roller Rescue that needs a new box, uh, things like that. So, perfectly uh, good manual there. Some fingerprints and light scratching on that one. That looks pretty good condition. Again, all of the boxes look pretty good. Manual looks good on that one as well. A lot of fingerprints on that one. But, you may have heard when I took the disc out there, that cracked a bit. Yeah, this is completely gone. So, that's a concern. We won't be able to... Yeah, we can't put a CD in there and expect it to be in good condition when we take it out again so we'll put that to one side just to remember which one it is manual slightly damaged on this one but aside from that it looks in good condition very good condition CD so that uh, may get used with the other one to put together a full good copy and let's have a look at this final one it's got a slight damage on the, the bottom of it very good manual. Oh, extra bump in the back, but that is slightly damaged. Let's take it out and have a look. Yeah, slight damage on the bump, but the manual looks in pretty good case condition. So, let's check out the final disc. Again, clouding. And a lot of marks and gunk. That needs a clean. There's bits are stuck to this. I don't understand why people end up with discs in such bad condition. What are they doing with them? None of mine look like that. The only game of mine that is in terrible condition is that outrun for the Xbox because the disc delaminated. I keep care of my stuff. Apparently other people don't. It confuses me. But anyway, four copies for the five pence each. I can't really complain. Final one is another football game. FIFA Football 2003. And again, five pence. So we've got 2005 and 2003. The case of this has a few dents in it, and uh, it's a replica case. This is a real. Right, so we don't have an inlay because this is a replica inlay. This has been printed, which tells me that uh, I'm going to have to search and <laughs> find another copy. Oh, for goodness sake. I don't like doing that, but what can you do? The manual itself is in good condition, so at some point someone's lost the, the inlay. This is... but the case, look at it. It's worn to, worn to pieces. Let's quickly check the disc, because it's the final thing we need to get on. Disc is covered in fingerprints and a couple of scratches, but should be playable once I've uh, given it a rub down. So there you are. All in all, just over £10 for that set plus the 99p I paid there. That's pretty good for the challenge. 17 games she got for just over 10 quid. I <laughs> certainly won't come there. Okay, hope you found that interesting. I certainly did, and I'm going to go and play those games now. So anyway, thank you very much for watching. I hope you did like this, and if you did, remember to click the like button. Share it with your friends so that they can see what's been going on too, and do subscribe for future videos, because there will be more in the future. But until next time, I've been Zoe Kirk Robinson. You've been watching the Zorg on ZJKR, and I'll see you next time.